Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode number 19 of the Eavesdrop Podcast. Today, a legend, a living legend in Call of Duty, a world champion, the man, the myth, the legend, the woo in everybody's hearts at home, Mr. Adam Killis Loss. How's it going, man? What's the, bro? Thank you for stopping by, man. Thank you for having uh, me. No, hell yeah. I, I always knew that you were going to be a, one of the first people that I that I interviewed or had a podcast with because of you're like how long you've been in the scene. Um, how's it been up? Everything's everything's good? It's been good. It's been going. I knew I'd eventually come down here and I knew this was a year since I haven't really been competing. So yeah. I knew I'd be down here eventually. Yeah, man. How's, how's fatherhood? You have two kids? Yeah, it's good. It's a blessing itself, but it's definitely work. Yeah? It's definitely work, yeah. So you have uh, two kids, um, Paisley and... Oakley and Oakley, uh, how old are they? Uh, Paisley was born eleven twenty nine, so she's like a little bit over two. And Oakley's turning one on Pi Day three fourteen. Three fourteen Pi Day. Yep, that is crazy. How's 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 how, how, how how fatherhood for for you though? Like what what's what's it been like? Because I had uh, Hastro here, and we were talking about fatherhood and everything that we went through. Give a little brief story about mine, and then him. And you know, I watched that podcast. Yeah, he's like brand new to the to the fatherhood thing. You have two years under your belt, you said? Two and almost a half, yeah. Nah, a little bit under almost a half, but what, two what's and the a, what's the toughest thing? Um definitely trying to definitely trying to balance your career and your kids because obviously, you know, you want to be the best father you can be. Yeah. And you want to strive to be the better father. Yeah. But um But at the same as time as a game as a gamer and a, a competitor, as I always look at myself as a competitor and it's hard. But Without my with my family, it helps me a lot. My mother and my father, I'm, I wouldn't be able to do it without them. So, no, so it's definitely they definitely help me a lot. Yeah, are you you're not you're not a single dad, right? Like you are are you a single dad? Like you're right yeah, now. You're, yeah, right now I guess you could say that because uh, <clears throat> and I mean the she does well too, like being able to do it by herself. You know, that's yeah. we have a good you know co parent thing. So that's yeah. so I'm blessed to have that at yeah. least. A, a lot of people a lot of people downplay downplay that and 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 for me in this day and age is not in the old school days where marriage meant that you have to, or or having a kid with somebody meant that you have to stay with them forever and ever and ever you know mm -hmm. there's sometimes where shit just doesn't work just out doesn't. and for the betterment of the kid sometimes being separate separated uh helps a lot more because you don't you sort of don't put your kids in in that line of fire when when shit's not working out yeah it, and they're young now so like they can you know they're not obviously seeing like the tension or yeah. even if there was something going on yeah but the older they get that you know it's gonna reflect and yeah it's better to it happens now than later down the road cool and then your your kids are currently living in indiana and you're in pennsylvania well yeah right philadelphia, now philadelphia sorry <clears throat> no nah, right now they're in indiana but after when i go back home i actually get them i'll be flying them out oh and awesome so i go and get them and then i bring i well now i gotta buy my daughter a ticket because yeah. she's over two now yeah but the other one i I you hold. Can carry. Yeah. Awesome. So I gotta buy two tickets now. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, I really am. I get excited. Last time I had them for Christmas, I got butterflies. I even go on. That's when I. That's when I knew. Like, I was real excited to see them. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. So how are you gonna balance? Because uh, you still stream. I, I've seen you stream a couple of times. I went mm -hmm. in, into your chat and challenged you to win a uh, a game of blackout. And then you, you middle of a 2K. I know I regret it. Oh, you were playing in the middle of the 2K. I wasn't gonna win it anyway. Yeah. But after that time, I actually took a month off and played black i feel like i could win that game now but yeah. then i wasn't gonna win that no way all right cool all right uh don't tap too much on the table all right okay um what do you what do you think about blackout do you play that a lot or are you just playing tournaments right now um <clears throat> with all the updates going on in blackout like it, it definitely has steered me more towards blackout yeah. rather than multiplayer and i see all the good ideas and the tactical based gameplay and it's really uh i enjoy it it's not battle royale is not my thing but i see like the ideas and everything goes behind it i think yeah. it's i think it's awesome and great and i know people love it so did you play uh fortnite at all i was going through a tough time in my life at the time but i i got into it a little bit but i didn't fully commit i never transformed from like default to builder pro at the time so i never but i like i had a real good shot people would say and i just wasn't the building skill gap i'm old school with everything yeah. so you know what i mean I, did. I, I didn't really get the building whole aspect so that's when i start that's when i stopped playing fortnite myself when the when the building got a little bit too hectic too hectic spam build yeah yeah if it was if it was look i know that i'm not gonna change the game or whatever but if it would have been just like uh a, a 
two layer thing, like two floor thing. Yeah. Then I think that that would have been Same. easier. But the fact that you get to build the the Eiffel Tower and, yeah. and, and the battles were just insane. Like yeah. at, like towards the end of the game, it'd just be literally spam building to the top, and then you get third party. Then, I mean, that's just that's how BRs are. The better people get, the more like you see the the flaws and some of the stuff. Yeah. But what do you a good think? Idea. Of, what do you think about it as a competitive? like game as an esport do you think it, it it has the ability to or do you think it's always going to be sort of this show matchy sort of uh streamers versus other streamers and, and and some pros it's a good way to put it show matchy i guess but uh as long as there's i think money and developer support there i think anything can be really competitive and at the end of the day when you're competing for millions or hundreds of thousands of dollars i mean blood's going to be pumping people are going to be excited and it's competitive a hundred million dollars is yeah. what what they're saying that they're going to give out. A hundred million dollars. That, that would means be you, nice. You, you don't even have to be the best. You could just hope for like top eight. Be, yeah, top sixteen or something. Yeah. Yeah. And you get paid. Um, that's that that to me is what what really you know sets them apart from from a developer standpoint in the in the way they're doing. Yeah, okay, sure, they have to cater to like really young kids who play the game but also have to cater to the to the mature audience that that's also a part of that that's, that's what i feel like that's one thing that call of duty is starting to like you know lean away from is the older audience you yeah know? we need to <clears throat> i think the games need to stay easier for people to uh you think for, it's too busy right now i just think it's uh it's just a faster paced game and it's like that's why people enjoy the battle royale it's slowed down you know people love the the idea of just looting and seeing the gold gun when they pick it up and yeah. detaching the attachments and attaching them like people love that stuff yeah. i do yeah i do i'll loot all day yeah that's your thing yeah have, just have looting, you, it's just like it's 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 like it's easing on the mind it's weird it just takes you into that place you know where you're playing video games again have you considered playing that exclusively or do you do you think like competing is, is where because i know you're you're a competitor but yeah. you know i'm a competitor too i'm competitive yeah. in everything i see everything as, as a competition um but do you think that if if there's an opportunity there like you would you would you would take that instead of competing or would you rather compete instead of playing blackout show matches? oh where i'm at at this point in, in competitive in the first event i practiced hard i had a fifth not show up I don't even. Yeah, I haven't talked to him since. I don't even know what happened there. But who was it? Uh, Supreme Agility. He's actually went to events all last year. But and then all of a sudden he just didn't show up. That happened twice, right? This year. Yeah, he actually got picked up after he didn't. He didn't show up for us for the PCLQ. Yeah, and then he didn't show up for them too. So I mean, yeah, you shouldn't I, have picked him up anyway when he didn't show up the first time. So I yeah. <laughs> but I nobody's talked to him since. So I mean, he has. Per, it's something personal. Yeah, it is like. I, you know, I'm sure he wanted to go to the event. Something happened. So yeah. it is what I feel bad. We had a situation like that way back in 2011 with Rambo. Rambo didn't show up to an event. And then and I think Nate Chat stepped up to to play in his stead. But, you know, sometimes shit like that happens. But when I heard it, that happened the second time. When I heard that it happened the second time with uh, Supreme Agility. One, I, 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 and this is by no means a, a shot at him or anything. But I, haven't, I, I hadn't heard of him. So when yeah. I heard the first time that this dude didn't show up. Or I heard that. The same dude that didn't show up the first time didn't show up the second time. I immediately said, "I'm like, I. I mean, I was very like a lot of people just jumped to conclusions. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, he's probably just like not he, cool with flying or something." Well, that's weird because he actually went to events in World of War Two. He teamed with Twiz. He teamed with those guys. They were actually a team of four for yeah. champs in the previous events. And then oh. when it went five v five, they just picked me up with the same team. They didn't do well, but <clears throat> they felt like you know I could have actually helped contribute to the team. He was an up and coming am, so like he definitely he wanted to compete. Something yeah. personally was whatever is going on. He, like trust me, I, I know he wanted to be there. Like yeah. we put the work in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something's going on. Yeah, like, something. Yeah, yeah. At first, when I heard that yeah. that it was the second time it did it, and uh, I, I I assumed that, but when I started to hear that he sh used to show up to events and do that, then immediately I'm like, I had to spend yeah. something super personal. That something. Yeah. Yeah. So it's understandable. He doesn't want to talk about. So yeah, you know, it sucks when when people don't have that large of a following where they can't explain themselves and they're just at the mercy of somebody with a bigger following saying one thing that just yep. like dictates the the sort of reason. Or manipulates the people that are listening type of thing, right? Yeah. I mean, whether they do it on purpose, the, the, the manipulating, or they just <laughs> don't know and they just text something. They like immediately, they just don't know like off the rip uh, on what that is. Um, all right, man, let's uh, let's get started. Um, I always start the podcast and, and the question to the guests, which is, who are you today? Uh, a proud father. Um Call of Duty legend. Nah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
just a uh, just a proud father and uh, I guess somebody an entertainer, somebody can put a smile on somebody's face. I guess I get that a lot. So yeah. I'll run with that one. It's true, man. It's true. Like uh, just just picking you, uh, on the way to pick you up right now with the uh, embos. I'm like, I was kind of happy. I'm like, hell yeah, we get to chill with, with Killer for a little bit. That's it's always laughs. Uh, it's awesome. It tells like you know, get to check out the op, what's going on down here. So yeah. it's, it's awesome. Definitely been in Texas. Hell yeah. So um, I kind of wanted to start at the beginning of of, uh, of of your career because you've been interviewed a whole bunch of times, but no, no, nobody has really gone in in depth into, into your your thing. And sort of like, uh, and this is a huge shout out uh, the the Score Esports. I think that's what it's called. The Score Esports. Um, or the esports report, something like that. The score, I think it's the score. They do an amazing job of sort of doing these documentary pieces on on players without the players having anything to do with the actual documentary pieces. So they don't really ask anything from the player. They just you know take everything that's been put out in the internet in the last ten years, okay. and then they just make a documentary out of it. And I always thought that that yours would have been a really really cool one to to check out. Um, because you, you sort of always been a prolific player, an infamous player, right? Because you, you, and when I say infamous, I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that you, you sort of been like this, this sort of bad boy persona that, that you've always had about you. And I'm cool with that. You know? Stubborn. Yeah. Stubborn. I, I look, I'm, I'm cool with it hundred percent. So, um, <laughs> how did it start for you? Like g give me the whole rundown. Cause I don't uh, even I'll know. I'll break it down. All right. Um, MW2 was the game I fell in love with. I got into competitive at MW2. That's when my name was V Killer with the one I remember. And that's when I started, you know, really falling in love with it. I How old were you? 16, 17. Okay. I remember right around that same time I actually got my first job. And I only worked there for two weeks. It was painting. I remember I painted for two weeks. And I was like, this is not me. And then, you know, that's when I just kept getting better at Call of Duty. At the time, it kept me out of trouble. So I just kept running with it. And my parents supported it. There was no money in it at the time, so I was just convincing myself that, hey, I'm staying out of trouble, you know, this is, and then I, I fell in love with it, and my parents were supporting it, so, you know, it, it was keeping them happy at the time, and I was trying to rebuild my relationship with them, because I was always, I wasn't the best kid in school. I still couldn't do school even if I tried, to be honest. But no, nah, but you, you weren't a good student? I just, it's just not my style. I can't sit there and I just really can't apply myself unless I'm like really passionate or really interested in it. Like, I, it just won't be the same to me. In, in school, were you like, the, were you always trying to make people laugh? Because I was, I was considered yeah. a class clown, sort of. Yeah. So I was, eh, yeah. I, I, yeah. Class clown, I guess. I always try to be that guy. But that guy got me in trouble too. So, yeah. <laughs> It is what it is. So you, you're trying to rekindle the, the relationship with your parents because you were a bad kid? Did oh, they, yeah. Did, back did, in did you run away or uh, what just, do you mean? Just getting in trouble in school, suspension, just little things, you know, staying on the game late. And when, you know, maybe I should have been in bed and then missing my first period or two or just sleeping in my first period or two. It was just it, it was just an ongoing process. School was a nightmare for me. And my, so once I got through that, that's like really when I became close to my parents and they they seen that you know i had a career they supported me i was making money competing and, and when, doing did you, that. when did you start making money competing uh mw3 so right after mw2 there was bob swan that's when i started you know becoming a top am and getting my name out there which i know is a problem now for people so i'll go into that i played with ego uh terror rj a lot of names you don't hear now but yeah, a, it, a lot of people you obviously don't know yeah ego ego um discovered a whole bunch of people right you you he, being one of them he's always the one that takes the risk on, on the people that are stepping stone we like yeah. to call it yeah yeah I, I, I'll, I'll i'd like to have him on the podcast one day um but just to give you guys a little bit of background on ego ego was sort of this community figure back in call of duty um eventually he went on to start 360 icons which is a, a tournament website but this guy um i don't even know how he had money but he had money and he always supported the players. He was always about the community, which mm -hmm. is something nobody will ever be able to take away from him. Yep. Um, and it's super admirable that he was able, that he was willing to to you know put his money on the on the line and, and support people, and sacrifice things. Yeah. So he would he this. would fly he would fly people out, and then you were you were one of the people. Who else did he discover in in, in your? Um, in too your, quick. Remember too quick. Yeah. Too quick. Yeah. Of course. Car I mean, he played with Karma. It was it was he that brought up Karma. Yeah. The circle of players. Yeah. Who else? Um. Remember we had that VA beach? How loud that was! Amazing, right? That was amazing, but that was a long time ago. It feels like yeah, seven years ago. I think so. VA beach line in two thousand fourteen. 
So if, if I won champ six years ago and did that interview, it has to be seven because it was the year before that, right? Yeah. MW3. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, anyway, so Ego went on to uh, to discover a couple, well, take chances on, on players that he that he saw were sort of breakthrough mm -hmm. or had a lot of uh, upcoming uh, talent. Yeah, upcoming talent. Karma, obviously, being the most successful one. And and I always, when talking about Call of Duty, I always put two scouts sort of in in uh, in in the battle of who did it better. And then Aix was the other guy that that was like sort of a that that has like a crazy eye for talent, right? Yeah. Uh, but Ego was the one that, in my opinion, has like the leg up. Um, Aix obviously has skill. Right? Yeah, he's just executing better. That's all that was. But yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Bops one. I remember I used to just go to events and have a good time. It was literally like you know how Bops one was. I wasn't gonna win, you know. That's how I looked at it with the people I was playing with. So I went there. Events are always a good time. Still are a good time. Go there, you know. I used to just have a good time. I was 18, maybe a little bit younger at the time. Yeah, you know, and met a lot of people through that. But that was my upcoming. I had to sacrifice and go to sacrifice events to, yeah. to get to where I wanted to be, like towards Bops to towards the end of MW3, where I grinded nonstop when there was nothing to play for. Mm -hmm. And that's where I really developed the skill for the game. Yeah. When the grinding, when there wasn't really much money and stuff yeah. involved in it. Well, people don't know, or some of people choose to forget, but um, Blops won. We had a, a really good season. It was the first time that we switched over to PlayStation. So we, I think, PlayStation, PlayStation made a commitment to MLG to play. First LAN system, too, yeah, I think. Yeah, the, the first LAN system. But then all of a sudden, Modern Warfare 3 comes out and everything goes away. Everything goes CTF, away. CTF, everything. No, just just competition. There was no there was no support oh, yeah. in the United States. Mm -hmm. You had to travel overseas to to compete for for yep. Modern Warfare Three. Um, all right, let's fast forward just a tiny little bit. You you get to Black Ops. Uh, I'm sorry, for Modern Warfare Three comes Black Ops Two. No, Modern Warfare Three. Yeah, Bob yeah, Two. Yeah, yeah. And that's when that's when you sort of like explode because towards the end of it, something amazing happens in your life. But let's let's start at the beginning. How how was how's the beginning of Black <clears throat> Ops Two for you? Like, and tell me. Actually, this, actually let's fast forward back to COD XP that oh yeah you guys won because i actually got third at that event and ended up walking away at 30k yeah and that's when you know i really started to see support from my you know and maybe hey this could go somewhere wow yeah. this is getting bigger and i just stuck with it and then because like in mw3 a lot of people quit like you said because mm -hmm. there's no support i was one of the few that stuck around and kept playing ctf kept playing to get better and just kept learning rules and, and things that i actually applied now and at the time when i won or whenever these these games that I played over the years, I'm still using things and applying them from a game that I learned six years ago, mm -hmm. and that's where I feel like some a lot of these players are missing out. Is the playing the old games. You learn something from every game and apply yeah. it to. You can apply it to the newer games, and and then Bob's two came around, and then I just went hard and. 100k after i won 30k and then yep. my parents were like oh so let, me, me, let me start tell me watching that, tell me how that season went because there was a you you guys were considered the first dynasty right like you guys yeah. were considered the 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 unbeatable and it wasn't until the second dynasty came along the, that 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 shut it off uh the uh, what was it pat uh pat cole. tp yeah cole complexity cole. so tell me tell me what it was like to 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 be part of the first dynasty how did it come about when did you guys start teaming uh, you know, because Karma, Karma to me, Modern War. I'm sorry, Black Ops Two Karma to me was was uh, something that I had yeah, never. You seen always before. say that. Yeah, right. Because this gunfights, you were just. Uh, you always say you were amazed watching. Yeah, dude, because he it, just the movement, right? He, he yeah. wouldn't look. He wouldn't need to look to his right to know how to get out of a window. Mm -hmm. He just his movement was just above and beyond. But tell tell me tell me a story, man. I want to from your eyes because I saw it. moved out the, uh, through the map, right? They just naturally moved through the map. That's kind of how. I was. Yeah. When I play these maps nowadays, there's a seaside map, and I'm like, I notice I'm naturally flowing through the map, like when I play. And then there's a map like Frequency where I don't catch a break and I don't win the map, and yeah. it's not a secret. Yeah. I don't flow with the map. Yeah. And it's like, it's just funny because looking back on the game, I flowed with a lot of the maps, and that's why. Well, just being honest with myself, you know, because obviously I think I'm great still, and you know, I can still play whatever. But just like looking back and knowing, like the maps were kind of just natural for me. Mm -hmm. The maps nowadays are can't lie to myself. I gotta like play on Orthodox or do something to catch yeah. a dub sometimes. <clears throat> but uh, back to the impact thing, yeah, we pretty much were the team that nobody wanted to play with. Like Karma was the player that everybody knew was nasty, but did not want to deal with his attitude at the yeah. time because we we're still kids growing up. And did he have a bad attitude? Yeah. 
He did. Even as a teammate, you like felt it. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's still he's he's obviously more mature now. But Karma's the player. When he reaches a boiling point, you know, like something needs to change or something's wrong because. When he speaks, that's usually when yeah. it hits the fan. Yeah, don't call me, Damon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting off. He just turned his stuff right <laughs> off. I'm like, oh, man, where did he go? He's like, I'm walking two miles to the gym. I'm like, what? Oh, he, yeah, he was hitting it yeah, hard he back He walked then. five miles to the gym. Like, we'd be worried about him. Like, is this guy good? We're walking five miles to the gym? He's letting some serious anger out or something. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he had the fire that year. We all did. Uh, yeah, we were, just, we were just a team of, like, people, like, um, uh, I remember too because we were running with Ricky, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of Mir, and I would just I remember because at the time I was just the maniac. Like I really wanted to, I really wanted to win champs. Like yeah. I seen it as an opportunity. There's a hundred thousand dollars on the line. Like we're at the we're top professional players here. Like this is an opportunity of a lifetime, and I feel like we were the only people at the time that took advantage. Of that Haggy, everyone doubted him. Nobody really wanted to play with him which is Christopher Duarte. Yeah. I don't know yeah, yeah. what people refer to him yeah. as anymore, but yeah. it was me, him. We started playing 360 Icons tournaments, and that's where we got good between me, Karma, and Parasite. We played with Ricky, but we weren't a complete team with Ricky. We were an S&D team. Yeah. We struggled to respawn, and we knew it. We needed a, like just a talented sub. And Damon, Damon, is, he's, he's a lucky one because he was like, we need, we need to make a change, and we need this guy, Mir. And me, I'm like, at the time, I actually went and played with Spacely, Slacked, in uh, Huddle. Mm-hmm. I sketched, and Damon was, like, freaking out. And then uh, he was like, blah, blah, blah. You're right going to go play with those little kids. And then Champs got announced, and he was like, what are you doing now? Like, they're underage. Come, yeah. come back and play with me. Like, you know we could be good. And <clears throat> it's funny because I was jumping from the first-place team to the second-place team, you know, like, at yeah. the top. Like, oh, I yeah. was, the, like, you know, I was that guy. And um, went back and played with Damon because i knew damon is damon three times great yeah still is great (laughs) yeah at the time he wasn't though i knew he was great yeah i I knew he was great and i just knew it was going to take a couple of great people to show that we all were great mir came in he just the most humble i've ever seen mirrors i love mir to death it's probably my best friend probably through the gaming Mm -hmm. and uh we've teamed for like 40 events that's actually crazy to think that is crazy and uh he came in humble, did his job, didn't – he always would think, like, hey – he would always tell me, like, hey, I'm playing with, like, the three best players in the game. He's like, no matter what, if we lose, I got to do better. Yeah. That's what he would always say, like, I got to do better, like, even when he was doing good. And that mindset, like – and then there was Chris who had the brains and was the search star. And, you know, the, we'd go back and forth, but us going back and forth is what made us a great team and <clears throat> yeah because there's a lot of arguments online between you guys i mean every so often when we're you opinionated know, people that's all it is yeah. part, that's another reason why people don't like uh, playing with me nowadays sometimes too because i'm very opinionated i'll just you know go out and say what i feel like is wrong yeah and i'm the same way i would like that in return if i played you know get me better tell me how to get better and that's a part of being a good teammate just yeah. not getting on like you need to push your teammates yeah winning is stressful that's what i say people winning is not easy it is stressful yeah um most of the time so so you guys so you guys formed this sort of soon to be god squad god time. squad right which it wasn't really a god squad that's why people didn't understand it because it was nobody looked at us as those players we were chemistry that's when people started realizing the teamwork i think that comes into call of duty mm-hmm. that's when cole formed they started watching theater and yeah. you know they started putting the extra homework in and yeah i think that's when the real teamwork started developing in call of duty was then with but, you guys yeah, but that was like the eye opener. Ray was the before that. Ray was the originator. Rambo, he he Rambo, was the yeah. one that showed people how to play the game. He's that's where I learned how to play Call of Duty. Ray, the Big T, yeah, Merc, J Cap, yeah, those yeah. players, you know, and are still doing it or still could do it. Yeah, you think they could still do it? I don't know about Big. It's been a while for Big. I know yeah. Merc could still do it. Who else? I know Merc could still do yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, look, J-Cap's still doing it. Still yeah, going fucking Cap's strong. Yeah, still doing it. He's still on a top four team or whatever. Who yeah. else? Big, he just, he lost the passion. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't know if he lost the passion as much as he just saw. He was my favorite. He was my favorite pro of all people. I always told yeah. him that, too. Yeah. Even when we beat him, I'd be like, dude, I love it. You're the best. Like, you're the GOAT. And he'd yeah. be like, he didn't understand. He's like, dude, you're winning everything. Like, yeah. I'd be like, nah, you're the GOAT. Dude. Yeah. No, he, he's, he's uh, like, 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 um, and also, uh, Will was one of the most humblest people I know. 
and he almost forces himself to be not cocky but to make those jokes where he, you know he, he's confident yeah his you know confident because obviously he's got a, he's got a confidence about him already so um all right so you guys form this this sort of um dynasty and then you guys go on to just like completely demolish everybody and win everything and you just got you guys are making hand you know money hand over fist because you're winning every single tournament mm -hmm. and this is during black ops 2 and nobody figured up until that point nobody had up until coal nobody really had figured out a way to to beat uh impact or what was it impact original or frico impact it was frico impact and then we went to impact after yeah um and nobody can beat you guys, right? And, and it was, like like you said, teamwork. Because at the time, I remember the, the, the first time I ever heard of, you know, not rotating a certain way was mm -hmm. in, in slums in Black Ops 2. Flipping spawns. Yeah. That's when all the rules we learned that still apply today, that's when we started learning them. Yeah. Because I remember you yelling at somebody because you guys were watching film and you were it was like, who is this going through mechanics instead? Or why didn't you push through mechanics? And I'm like, what the fuck does that have to do with the game? Man. And then that's when it opened up my mind that I'm like, oh, you can block spawns. And it is like a different sort of meta to a game that you guys like learn to discover as a team, which was to me like revolutionary and, 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 and widely and certainly deserving of the name of a dynasty. Um, so much so that you guys go to, an, to a UMG event. Right, we we choose to not go because, whatever reason, and, and we just decided to stay home and we didn't show up. Optic didn't go to this UMG event, um, and then you guys do show up, and then you guys are playing against Envy, and at the time Karma, well, let's let's I, I got too far advanced. So tell me <laughs> what happened when Karma left and why he left from your perspective, because I you know, to this day I don't know. I've never asked him. Um, and then we'll talk about that. It's funny because he'll even say he re he regretted leaving. Mm -hmm. But he made the right decision because at the time we just won MLG Dallas. That was the very first event. Then MLG Dallas carried over into Call of Duty Champs. Or no, we actually did an EGL before that. We went over and won the European event, got some pre-land practice, mm -hmm. which no one really remembers or even thinks about that. We're the only team to go over there after we won Dallas and played EGL and got that extra land practice. Mm -hmm. And that definitely set us ahead to going into Champs because that was like a uh, pre-land right before Champs. So we won EGL, won over, won the European event after Dallas, which you know how Europe is. It's a huge scene over there. A lot of teams. The yep. AM scene's huge. Um, people don't realize that. It's so much support over there. It's crazy how many people love Call of Duty over there. Um, went over there. You know, that was an eye-opener to me in life because, like, didn't realize how supportive Europe was. Um, then we rolled into champs and, yeah. And you guys won, but you guys didn't, um, so you guys won champs, right? Yeah. And then Damon leaves after that. Some, okay, that's what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, for, yeah. For, I totally forgot what we were talking about. So <laughs> Damon, yeah, Damon left, he left, because uh, at the time we were kids living life, you know, we just got to, just won $100,000, you know, be playing a video game, just turned 19 maybe, you know? And yeah. Well, let, let's, sorry, I, I, I apologize for interrupting. I know that people hate it when I do this, but mm -hmm. I want to know what it was like for you to sort of to give me the road, because I, I, I fast forwarded too much to when he left, but give me give me the road of that year, you guys leaning into champs, and then what the, the whole champs experience was like for you, because it was a it was a true, it was the first, obviously we have had the million dollar tournament, which we won, but that was arguably a show match, is yeah. what you're seeing now in Fortnite. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, luckily we won that because it put us on the map like really, really hard. And obviously, with our ability to promote ourselves, that helped. But you guys were like the true competition. You guys were the winners of the first true competition. Yeah. So t tell me, tell me like that that road to that and 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 actually accomplishing that. Um, when the game dropped, like we said, a hundred thousand dollars online, we thought it was a dream come true. You know, Call mm -hmm. of Duty's finally, you know, throwing some money at the people that are passionate about their game and been playing it for a decade or whatever. And I took advantage of that. I didn't want to work a nine to five. You know, I wanted to play video games. It was a dream. It still is a dream. Still living the dream. And we all were in a tough situation. Pat, Chris was ready to quit. Mir, I told, I convinced Mir to quit his Starbucks job and go hard. Mm -hmm. And Karma at the time was, you know, Karma, great player, but nobody wanted to deal with him. And everyone knew he was a great player, but they didn't expect him to actually build a form of team that was going to win. They knew he was capable of winning. But he would have just kind of got held out of that, you know, kind of out of the loop in the circle. He would have been just one of those guys just because of his attitude. And it just felt good because we put hard work in. And that was the main thing. Like you said, with the hard point, like pushing a certain way, like we didn't sit there and make up excuses, which I still see throughout Call of Duty nowadays. 
We sat there, we learned it, we didn't make up excuses, we debated, we argued, we wanted it, we were hungry, and we took advantage of the opportunity we were given. And a lot of people say, oh, we were in school, or you grinded then, and I, I mean, at the end of the day, now that we're all adults and older, we took advantage of the opportunity, people were dumb for not. So, I mean, that's the way I look at it. We just worked harder and took advantage of the opportunity, that's all that was. Yeah, so the the scenario happens, you know, uh, Proofy searching for you guys, trying to kill you guys. Uh, what, what what map was that? Raid and raid. raid? He's, he's no or, or the clutch meltdown. S and D. Meltdown. Right? Yeah, it was meltdown. Me and Mir two v four that. Yeah, you you. It was you and me, right? Yeah. And then it was. Uh, Proofy is searching for both of you. You got shoulder peaked a couple got shoulder times. Peaked you know, a couple of times. <laughs> doing this forever. Yeah, yeah. And and he doesn't get it. He doesn't do it. You guys, obviously, the the, the time runs out. You guys win confetti's flying from everywhere you realize in that moment you know it, i feel like it feels amazing you feel like you can accomplish anything you put your mind to yeah. because like this is our career this is what we do like anybody that's a professional or something you know when you're the best at that it's like it's like it's almost like that it's like the it's, it's at the mountaintop you know it's like i've reached success i can do anything i put my mind to type of feeling mm -hmm. and I mean, it was real humbling at the time. I'm not going to lie. Well, at first I was kind of cocky. And then like now I'm super humbled, but like I slowly became humbled over time. Yeah. And, but the more humble I got, I feel like the more, you know, maybe it cost me as a player too. Yeah. Because no, I, 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 that drive and that fire. And, oh yeah. I say that all the time. I say that all the time. Like th there is nothing more powerful than, than you being your biggest fan and being super, mm -hmm. super confident. And carrying and, a self-ego sometimes. Yeah, dude. Ego, ego has gotten me to where I am today. No bullshit. It would have been really easy for me to say when I was 29 years old, I was like, I'm too old. I can't make a YouTube video. What am I going to teach these kids? Same or probably what? one way or another. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I, if, I'm, if I didn't believe in myself to say you, I have something to offer, then I wouldn't be where I am. So, all right. So you, you, you win this thing, <laughs> you know, week one. Uh, how long did it take them to give you the check? Or like, to, how long did it take for your money to get into your account? And obviously, you guys won this in California, which means that you got took, you got robbed by the taxes, right? I just seen that California state tax thing that because like I, I already paid for it but i forget why i got something in the mail that said like some yeah. and i was like yeah yeah so so if, if if you guys aren't from the united states or or not from uh california um since it wasn't regular income or it wasn't from a job it was a, it was a tournament earnings it was sort of considered gaming it's uh like 40 percent or so 40 percent. so instead of getting a hundred thousand dollars like, listen to this okay these guys work their entire year put hours on end sacrifice risk leaving their jobs risk uh time risk everything to win a hundred thousand dollars only to be only to have to pay forty thousand dollars it's taxes. known as like a prize or like like a game show it's yeah. kind of like yeah. that's kind of the category I got put into like i won money on a game show type of thing so yeah. it went into like a totally like overtaxed different tax bracket yeah. and i'm still learning about that stuff and my, and my father <clears throat> He helped me with that stuff because I would have been so oblivious to all of this. And he still presses me today like, you know, you're in a different, you know, you're in a different tax bracket. Yeah. You know, it's the quarterly, you know. Yeah. You, yeah. And <clears throat> which a lot of people probably don't even know about any of that, like quarterly taxes. But uh, yeah, pretty much, pretty much wrote us off that we won in a game show type of thing. So, all right, so you got, you have $65,000 ask in your account. What is the first thing that you do? Because I hold we at the time. And that's funny. That's why people always like looked at me and looked at me kind of like I was different or one of a kind because I had the money and I was still walking around with my my stuff in a uh, the paper bag or a plastic bag, like yeah. showing up to my station events after I won in a pla like everyone at Astro bags, you know, everyone's yeah. getting decked out, you know. I'm still walking around with like plastic bags, not really caring or not even like, you know, really buying new shoes or anything. I'm not materialistic, so yeah. still, still am not. And, and, I guess you could say, yeah, I'm just not materialistic. I just don't, you know. So you didn't ball out. Didn't ball out. Everybody else did. It might have costed them, but yeah. I didn't ball out. No, nah, I, I still man. have some of my savings. So That's insane, dude, because yeah. it's been how long? So seven years. Listen, old. listen, if I would, how old were you when you did this? Uh, 19. I had to be. 19? Mm -hmm. I'm 19, I, and somebody gives me $65,000 for, for winning. I'm, I, I know what I'm doing. Sure. I'm maybe, maybe, and I mean this, maybe, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm a grown man and I have responsibilities now. I but completely do it different now though. Yeah, what would you have done? 
well now it's Balled easy, out? easy to say i could just invest some I could yeah, yeah but yeah. i would definitely take like a vacation to like somewhere definitely you know so you didn't do anything any like celebratory like spend you didn't say i'm gonna buy myself a, a, a car or something will bought himself a car and his mom a car you know no nah, i honestly at that point i still was focused on grinding you know just try to stay just kept trying Dude, to that's push. insane congrats on that man Props. like people like a lot of people know how it is you know it, you don't know how long something's gonna last you know you never know so at that time that's kind of how my mindset was and it's like i'm the best at this they're putting a million dollars into this but i need to just keep progressing and not look back yeah so that's why that's why i didn't and i'm a gamer i don't like leaving the house or really doing it yeah so. <laughs> amen to that <laughs> um all right so that's 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 cool man that's, that's really cool to hear i've never heard that 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 part of the of of history like that right that you didn't spend you buying uh gucci bags and all this stuff and yeah now he's looking back like <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm dude, sitting here like I, look i give you props man because again if i'm i'm 19 years old i get I, I maybe i would put 25 percent away and the rest i'm balling out i'm talking about car <laughs> maybe a car definitely clothes if i'm 19 that's all that's all my, my brain goes to um that's insane anyway all right so so you guys win and then you guys are still sort of dominant for the next couple of because champs was like in in a Okay, so let's go back a little bit, okay? Because yeah, because a lot of newer Cotta fans don't really know about the history, so yeah. I guess we're kind of educating them a little. Yeah, bit, so guess. now you see champs being at the end of the fucking season kinda, of Call that of hurts Duty. me as a player too, because I excel in the beginning of the games. I pick up games faster, and yeah. Damon's a player that's actually really the same way. Yeah, because you get to watch him all the time, obviously, yeah. and he learns games fast. He's one of the players that do learn the games the fastest. So you you want to get him earlier in the game because that's when he's his best. But now uh, Damon's obviously Damon. Yeah. But and people are obviously getting better, and new players are coming along that are still like uh, acquiring the same attributes that other players, great players have. Like maybe Dash is another one, a good example. I've watched TJ play. TJ's insane. Um, yeah, a lot of these players are coming along, and they're picking up these things that these players in the past weren't picking up yeah. faster. And that's what's it, those kids were S and D players at one point, and now you know now they're MLG champions or whatever the case may be. They're champions and. That's because people aren't learning. They're picking up things faster and learning. And they're coming in, they're humbled, they're hungry. And that's just what's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, so so <clears throat> all that all, all that aside, you, you guys continue. So where, where I was going with that is that at the, back in those days, Champs was an advertising right. sort of event. Uh, and they used it to, to push. So you would have sort of a segment where the new game comes out and everybody's buying the game. Mm -hmm. So Activision to refresh in the 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 love for the game or to re-advertise the game as a not a necessarily a new game, but to put it back on people's radars, they would throw this massive one million dollar event in like the middle of March or April. Right? So Champs was in the middle of the season. Well obviously now they're season, but Champs was like in the middle of the thing where the game still had like five months of lifespan before the new game drop. Okay. So to, to, to just to, to put that into 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 a front into a frame, so I can I can go on with my question here. So you guys win champs, and then there's still five months left of this of this uh, of this game. So you guys still dominate a little bit after that, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. We got cocky, and that's when Damon left. Like mm -hmm. I think you're gonna run on to what the MV thing where yeah, the lose right, came in. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me uh, let me just pause it right here because I got to mm -hmm. give a shout out to our sponsors. Our first sponsor, squarespace.com. You've known them because they've uh, sponsored the show before. If you go there right now, squarespace.com forward slash last pod to launch your website, you're going to get a free trial. But then on top of that, you can get 10% off by using the code last pod. Now, I cannot tell you how imperative it is for you as a creator, as a creator to have at least your domain, right? I have hex.com. I own that, which means that I can create business at hex.com. And it seems a little bit more easily presentable to somebody that you're trying to get a sponsor for. Not only that, but you can also build your website easily customizable right out of the box. The second that you click publish, it goes to mobile. You can see it on mobile. You can see it on the website. It's incredibly easy to use. Uh, the, the marketing tools that you need in this day and age, what sets you apart as a creator from somebody else 
has to be everything that you have to offer, including your website. We're actually currently working on the website for the eavesdrop as we speak. If you're creating your own website, it's gonna be as easy as click and drag. You can grab pictures and put them in a specific spot, write a quick blog about it, write a quick vlog about it, tell people about you. You just create a one-stop shop for people to consume your content. This is where you need to start. Thank you so much, squarespace.com. As I said, last pod is what you wanna be. Uh, we appreciate the support. And last but not least, a sponsor that has been here before, so we certainly appreciate the fact that you guys have come back. It's upstart.com forward slash hex if you want to find out what your credit score is or your upstart score. Because I'm going to tell you one thing. Companies, traditional lending companies, only look at you as a number on a sheet of paper, what your FICO score is. Some of you don't even know what a FICO score is. If I could have had this opportunity very early on, a lender that looked at more than just my credit score, I would have had such a better opportunity to jumpstart my life. You know, the fact that in high school, I couldn't get a car loan because my credit score, which I had just gotten out of high school, there was no credit score, wouldn't give me a loan. They didn't take a look at the fact that I was making enough money and I had a budget that fell within my means to be able to afford this car and make every single payment. They didn't care about that. All they care about was this one little single number uh, on a sheet of paper, which is your FICO score. Uh, Upstart.com is revolutionizing the way that you borrow money, and they take a look at your entire self. The way everything that encompasses you, they take a look at. And look, sometimes you need that sort of uh, metric that tells you, man, you can't afford this, but you can afford something like this. The lending system has changed. It's revolutionized. It's being revolutionized right now by Upstart. If you want to get started, you can head over to upstart.com uh, forward slash hacks. They make it simple. They make it easy for you to know your credit score without affecting your credit score because as you know, this magical number that people choose to judge you by uh, gets affected every single time you check it. When you go to upstart.com forward slash hacks, you'll be able to check your credit score right there and then and then you can maybe explore the possibilities of you being able to do that. Over 100,000 people have already used this service to pay off credit cards, to consolidate debt. They've done it all within the new means that there is thanks to upstart.com as i said forward slash x thank you very much let's get back to the interview so you guys uh win you guys get cocky right you guys get cocky and you should again i'm, I'm a big fan of egos a huge mm -hmm. fan of egos because in my opinion ego is something that you can either control or it can control you Controlling you is a detriment to your being. It's a detriment to your life. It's it's it can spiral out of control to the point to where you can literally damage your life forever. But if you can control your ego, then the 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 it's limitless, right? It's like that pill in the movie, limitless. Never looked at it like that. I like that. Yeah, it can allow you to do everything and anything you want in in, in the world. So, um, tell me about uh, you know you guys kept winning, and then tell me what happened that made Damon want to leave. Uh, the event where I did the. The shirtless interview. That's where it all started. Um, Gfinity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we went to beat Cole so bad, you know, and, and it's like. Had, had you guys been beaten by Cole then? Um, I think Anaheim was right before then we lost, but Anaheim, we just like. Didn't we care. Didn't care and still got second. And I remember, uh, yeah, we didn't literally not announce. I remember the sun was coming up and me and Mir were, you know, we're, we're partying. We're having a good time, you know, and. Uh, Cause it was a good time at the time, and like you said, we just you know, yeah, it was it was, it was a great time. Look, and, you, uh, you had just well, I'm, I'm gonna defend you here because somebody's gonna be like, Oh, you should be look, you're young, you just won. I was uh, young and dumb, yeah, you, you, you just want everyone is young and dumb, so mm -hmm. you're in good company. But you, you guys had just won, you, you're so unbeatable at the time that you guys, you know, you this is where the ego got a little bit better of you, it controlled you, like, mm -hmm. we're so good. That we're gonna stay out partying all night, and then we're gonna try to go win a championship. Even then, brother, we're good enough to beat your team, but we weren't good enough to beat Cole. Yeah, but you were still so good. You were good enough to still come in second. Yeah, no, I over, know. If that didn't even sleep. Sun came up, and then I remember we that, that was just a chemistry thing. Back to the chemistry thing, and then we when we ran into Cole, like they had chemistry. They did it. Krim, Krim wanted it. Krim came along, came from Halo, mm -hmm. and he hasn't stopped till this very day. Mm -hmm. He has not stopped. He has not changed from that moment back then to now. He's still doing what, what he was doing then. Yeah. So that's pretty impressive. I'll take my hat off then for that, for uh, <clears throat> for giving no false confidence, staying focused. You know, like just not not really showing his competition any any weaknesses or nothing. Yeah. No one's picked up anything on Krim. It's a robot. It's, the, I remember he always says something about that mind gem book or something. Yeah. And I'm like. And maybe I haven't read it. I've heard some stuff. Whatever, whatever he's doing, or he learned from that, or what he's—it's working because he's a 
you can't get through to him. He's like Damon, you know? You can't read him. You can't see his emotion. Those players are hard. I'm a player that when I used to see emotions, I used to get up and talk, talk some smack, get yeah. in their heads. And, you know, they're not that type of player. You're not going to get anything out of them. Yeah. In, in Gears of War, you have this this sort of um, the sort of culture where you are loud. You do get up. I was you watching, do yell, yeah. right? Um, do you think that your style of trash talk would work in this day and age in Call of Duty? Or do you think that you would get fined? Would you take the fine like Jordan did? No, I mean, it depends on what team I was on. I'd take the fine. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it just depends. Like I said, I've humbled out, you know, over the years, you know? Yeah. I, I look at life a lot differently now than I did when I was 18 years old, you know? Okay. Now I have two kids, you know? Now I'm, yeah. I'm grateful for a lot more things. It, like, even like back to a couple of years ago, I would sit there and bash the game or just be miserable. Yeah. And I've came a long way since then. Like, I've definitely found my, it's found my happiness, you know? And that's, that's went a long way with me. Okay. I, I want to ask you a question about, you know, your, your state of mind right now, the mature state of mind that you're in right now. But I want to go through the, I want to finish the story about, you know, Gfinity and Damon leaving. Oh, yeah, because I want right. to keep it chronological here before I ask you the question about um, your maturity. Go on. So tell me. So Damon was hungry still. He still wanted to win, you know. And Damon always wanted to, Damon always wanted to play for, you know. He always, he didn't want to be a, he didn't want to be the scrap team. We're the scrap team that won champs, right? Found a last minute or well, he didn't want to, he always wanted to have some stability, which everybody does. Yeah. And he was the first one on that. And we slacked. He was he was mad and he seen that, you know, we weren't as motivated, we weren't whatever. And he was the first one to make the move. At the time, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna go so hard when I play this guy. Like, oh my God, like I cannot believe you. Like, what, how do you how do you tell like, you? We guys? had like a brotherly, you know, we just won chance. We changed our lives together. Yeah. That's how we looked at it. Like we were we were boys. We were best friends. Yeah. We changed our lives together. We're going to remember each other forever. And uh, for him to do that to us, especially like after like a fir- like maybe a tough L, two tough Ls, the one we didn't even count, we knew, but G Finney, we lost legit. We were like, you know, we were, we had such an ego. We couldn't, we couldn't accept the loss. We we're sore losers. And I blame mainly myself for that. I'm a big sore loser. I really am still same, to this day. Same. And I'll even say after I lose, if I'm streaming, I'll be like, I'm sorry, guys. Like, GG, I'm, ugh. I'm like, I'm a sore loser. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's why I'm bl- blaming you or accusing you of cheating. I'm, like, no, I'm <laughs> doing this. Some crazy stuff. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm just a sore loser. I'm sorry. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Damon left. I went envy the game a good offer. And it was. How do you tell you guys? Cause that's always that's always a curiosity of me, and I'm sure for a lot of people, is like how the sketches go down. Yeah, how, how the sketches, yeah. the mentality. That's the, the best part about it. Like behind, the, like if if fans or like people actually like people that support COD knew about that stuff, like it's actually interesting. Like seeing how it goes down, but uh, it's called the eavesdrop because we get to eavesdrop into the past. You know, listen to this conversation that that didn't happen. Stro always loved Dame, and that's what it was. He always knew he was great. Mm-hmm. And then you just won champs, best player in the game, right? And I mean, there's no this. Everyone solidified, I guess yeah. most people say he's best player in the game. Uh, but everyone gets that confused because he played his role just like everybody else played their role. And that's what people miss nowadays in Call of Duty. We have helped him do better. Stro, Stro loved Damon, always loved, wanted Damon. Damon just had the attitude that nobody wanted to deal with. Mm-hmm. And at the time, it's like, this guy's the best player in the game, just won champs. Like, who cares about his attitude? We'll, like, deal, with we'll deal with his attitude. And uh, which they did. I remember he uh, he drove Rambo freaking. He Damon pushes his teammates like that's just how it is. I respect it. He does not take losing for an answer, and I, like I wish you cannot find that mindset. I feel like so many people are complacent. And who did he join for? J Cap was it? Because J Cap joined Optic then, right? I don't remember. I think so. J Cap joined Optic. No. 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 Because Whose spot did he take? Because Jacob took Merck's took Stainville spot. spot, right? Yeah, Stainville. Oh shit. Okay, yeah, yeah Stainville. Taj. Yeah, Taj. Recruiter. Recruiter. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> but, so tell uh, me how you tell you guys, and then because 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 oh, it, yeah. it, it couldn't have been easy. I'm gonna tell you why because it's not easy. One, probably like, at the Hippodrome. At the Hippodrome. <laughs> Love it. It's, it's one of my favorite clubs. But l- l- let me let me frame this question up for you because it couldn't have been easy for any of you you you, you guys like you said it was a brotherhood you got, nobody else we felt betrayed nobody we else up betrayed. until your point brother had felt what it was like to change your life to have like something that. special yeah create something special yourself yeah so you felt betrayed 
Yeah, we all did. And I remember at the time I was like, I was like, we don't need him. I was like, we're nasty. I was like, we'll just pick up John. I was like, we'll just sub in John and he'll really feel like he missed something out. Yeah. And that's when that's that was a like John is a great player. I was actually oh, playing amazing. with another yeah. amazing, but it what it's not there's a there was a piece to the puzzle and the piece didn't, you know? And this piece was a great piece, but he wasn't our piece to the puzzle. Yeah. And that's that's when you start learning a lot about like he's a great player, but he's not always the right fit. And then we ended up getting third, and that's when I wooed mm-hmm. at Envy. I uh, <laughs> the passion came out of me. Yeah. So to to frame it up for you guys, uh, there, there was this, and, and this is where the question about your maturity comes in, right? There's a video out there called the Kill a Choo Choo Train, right? Um, up until that point, you guys were the the dynasty team. But you guys were also sort of these bad boys in, in in Call of Duty, which is needed in my opinion. Getting bounced around orgs, went from frequent impact to impact to now Epsilon, you know? Yeah. So you guys had we're a We're winning lot. and nobody really wanted to what? deal with us still, yeah. which, you know, didn't make sense. Now it wouldn't be like that. But then it was like, wow, these guys are, you know, out of control. Nobody, like, who's winning and nobody wants you? Like, that's crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. And... uh that was definitely a, a big learning experience for me. But yeah, it wooed my way off the stage. Well, so. Told Stro to sit out a little bit. Nah, no, that, that was, was, that was me. Weird. Put him in a body bag. <laughs> Look at my bank. So many, like, so many, like, what is it? So many <clears throat> phrases and, and catch words came from that that it's it's like one of the most legendary in my opinion one of the most legendary moments in call of duty history because you in and, and i'm gonna be honest here you know you saw i was everybody was like had first row seats to seeing a team that was so dominant implode in a sense and and you saw it and, and you could tell it was passion you could tell it was real you could tell emotions that, get the best of us too. yeah you could tell that it was all of that because damon was damon had had broke up broken up the the, the brotherhood instead of Maybe working it out instead of maybe having somebody else. Essentially, could have cost us money, right? Yeah. Essentially, yeah. Could have, we could have all made more money at the time together. Okay. I mean, now thinking back on it, but I mean, at the time, it was like, it was just an ego thing. Yeah. Like he, Damon knows when Damon knows when stuff hits the fan, and he was the first one to realize we're not taking this stuff serious, and he went to go put people at word. And I would have do the same. I would have did the same thing looking back, but then I just thought I was so good that it doesn't matter. Like I was partying to. The sun came up. Yeah. They're getting an hour of sleep and still waking up the next day and placing second. Yeah, I'm thinking like, you know, I'm gonna be doing this forever. And the next event, like, oh, we'll catch, you know, we'll get them. And then he sketched, much needed sketch. And then from there, it's like, I think that was the last time I played with. No, played with Damon AW. Yeah, when you guys joined the Optic Nation. Um, so you, the maturity thing, right? You you say that you're different now. You 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 obviously, and you are. You have to be, right? As, as a parent, it changes you. Everything about every you know, life. Yeah, yeah. You, you lost a really good friend of yours. Right? Yeah, a lot and, of people yeah, don't know uh, about that. Yeah. Uh, but you you see that video now. Do you see a different person? Do you remember like the feelings that you were going through? You do you watch the video even? Yeah, no, I know. I needed to succeed. Then nobody was going to stop me. That was my mindset. Yeah, and this was I was given the opportunity of a lifetime. I knew it. And Call of Duty, even to this day, I've been places that you know I'm thankful for. I've seen stuff that you know I tweeted the other day. Just been a lot of places, seen a lot of stuff. You know, just tweeted some random. But that's actually true, all because of Call of Duty mm-hmm. that has allowed me to be able to do this. Yep. And now I'm very thankful. Maybe two years ago when I was unhappy, maybe no, I couldn't sit here and say this, but like, actually, I'm happy for what I've done. Like, say if I put this down and, you know, went and pursued another career somewhere else, I'm thankful for the places I've been and what I've been able to see and the different types of people I've learned to get along with mm-hmm. and the different cultures and seeing the way people, remember I was saying to you about the houses, how the houses are different down here and, yeah. and the houses in Vegas all look the same. Yeah. And then in PA, all the houses look the same and it's it's just crazy like how you go everywhere and you see the different cultures and the different types of people and yeah. that's what gaming is. Gaming brings all those people together into one mm-hmm. and it just, all the social media, all the dumb stuff you're hearing going on in the world, that's all relevant in gaming. Yeah. That, for that, the most part, no, same, dude. I like. I, I used to when this whole thing started for me. I used to hate traveling. I used to hate traveling. I used to say, you know, I love to go places, but I hate the process of traveling. Mm-hmm. Um, and I traveled so much 
throughout my career that I it just became a, a part of life, like riding a bicycle. So, uh, like but coming yeah. down here today, like I knew I was gonna be able to get on the plane and sleep. Yeah, and like I can come down here, whatever today, and then leave tomorrow. And it's traveling's nothing to me. I enjoy traveling now. You know, I actually do. Now I can sleep on a plane, but uh, <clears throat> it's just like sitting at home doing nothing. You know, yeah, messing around with Discord. Man, I I I gotta tell you, one of the one of the coolest moments in my in my career was to finally you know have uh, th there's one player in the world and and i don't mean this in any disrespectful way uh but there's one player in the world two players actually but i'm not gonna name the other one um there, there's one player there's two players in the world that would never could never be a, a part of my call of duty team one of them is aches and i the other one i won't mention because i don't want him to feel bad aches is 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 like the and he would never join Optic, you know. Given the opportunity, it's, it's one of those things where not because I don't but like Woody him. Woody is the real question. I don't know. All, all I'm saying is like uh, I respect Pat more than 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 a lot of Same. people in this in this space. I I think I think uh, and and I've I've been getting on the phone. I've, I've been texting this motherfucker to get on the fucking eavesdrop for a long ass time, and he just doesn't reply, or he'll reply, and then we just never get to do it. But I, I respect him so much, mind and and, and huh? he's a mind of his own. Yeah, and and I and I need him on the podcast because mm -hmm. there's so many questions that I need to ask him. But um, <clears throat> but one of my one of my uh, you know happiest moments in my career was when when you joined the team, right? The Farico Legends joined my team, um, <laughs> and and that was Optic Nation, you know during advanced warfare that was one of the best times that you guys time. you guys placed better than the than Optic. our than, than the main mm -hmm. team right was, and ghost too yeah and in, yeah and ghost. In ghost i remember i had i had clay and proof at the time behind me yeah watching us play right before they were gonna play me me, me and Miro talk about that it was me rick bose and mir and Mir would always joke about how uh, Mark would bring the fire when he played, like, we would call it the A-team to, like, you yeah. know, get us pumped up. Like, like bro, be like, yo, we're the A-team. Like, let's go hard. And uh, Mark would always, like, turn up. He would go so hard. And uh, it's just funny because they were behind me watching my games. Like, yeah. whoa, dang. Like, about to play this guy. And I'm like, look behind him, Like, you see that? that was he's like, wow, you're on that next level thing. And I'm like, I'm about <laughs> to smoke you. <laughs> you're about to get smoked. <laughs> Uh, but so uh for for me it was uh i'm such a call of duty fan and such a competitive call of duty fanatic like uh Same. like i was just i was just telling uh embos when you went to the bathroom that i got to like taking a picture of you for my wall it's like one of the coolest things because i consider you like that sort of level of a uh, of, of of a part of call of duty uh it's like a baseball card like a rare baseball card it's awesome so so you guys join so you guys join and, and to me I, and, and i want to ask you this and i, I want to hear the fucking truth the honest truth and answer on this okay i always thought that that you embos miracles uh, miracles mirror and uh who else uh ricky would have made a solid ass team. i mean uh yeah i think you guys would have made a solid team why Maybe. why why didn't that ever work out well like I mean, we were pretty solid. We just never won. What do you mean, like, work out like... Yeah, you guys always, like, what? Why didn't we win? Yo, let's drop embos. Let's drop embos. <laughs> Mark's going to hate me for this, but I'm just going to flat say... Yeah, yeah, you, say, you got to be a coachable player mm -hmm. at the end of the day. If you're not a coachable player, yeah. your you're, uh, potential only goes so far. And... And that's Mark, uncoachable. He is talented, though. Like he's a good player. Yeah. Would you Would you agree with that? One of a kind. Yeah. So this is and this is always gunfights off sprint. How's that even possible? Yeah. He's nasty. This <laughs> nasty. is the, this is the thing that that people need to understand, and and a lot of people give Embos a lot of shit, and and some people don't even give him credit. Yeah. He might be an uncoachable player. Or, it, 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 name it whatever it is, whether it was attitude. Uh, coachable. At the time, he wasn't yeah. coachable. No, no, but but. But from a skill level, he he's there. Yeah, so anybody yeah. that anybody that like downplays Mark about not being a good player, they don't like, know anything. Literally, don't know shit about it. He's a search player too. Yeah. Know. The other thing that you got to understand about him is that the reason he doesn't compete now is because he doesn't want to leave Optic, and I and I love that. Right. That he's he's a, he's like my little brother because of that, and he sacrificed. Stop stopping what he loves to do which is competing so he can stay on a team that he fucking loves and lives for so when, when anytime ever gives him like a like a tough time about oh he's not doing this or he's not doing that like one they don't know what the fuck he's doing behind closed doors right like yeah he may not be creating content but you don't know what he side hustles he's got mm -hmm. going on right but but more importantly like a lot of people say like bose is trash but they really like they don't understand the fact that he could be on a team he just chooses not to because he that means that he would have to leave optic and that's a family he's never ever gonna leave yeah um but anyway so why 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 just uncoachable he's just well i mean 
it wasn't like we all had our flaws. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. At the time, I was a terrible leader. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot about leading teams over. Uh, Rick and Bowles was actually because when we joined that team and we gave up that league spot, mm -hmm. we had to make this work mm -hmm. or else we weren't. We missed out on the league. It was a big deal then. You know, we wanted to be Optic Nation, but without the leagues, without, you know, playing for something, it's yeah. like we weren't we weren't playing for anything. Yeah. So once again, I went hard, you know, and I, what I mean hard is I want to perfect stuff. I want to watch stuff and I want to I want my teammates to coach me up and I want to coach them up. And uh, we had our we were a search team. We were we were fun to watch. And oh, yeah, it was 100%. Fun. That was my most that was the best team I've ever like I've won and had fun, but nothing amounts to that amount of fun I had on that team because of just the amount of doubt we got. Mm -hmm. You know, we weren't good and we were getting good place in some uh, we really weren't we were like a top sixteen team in my eyes, by the way, we would practice and the way we looked, and then we'd show up to the event and place top four somehow. Yeah. And it just didn't we would just clutch up. That's the one thing I give everybody on that team. Mir, Rick, Bose, all clutch players. And it should when you have those clutch players in search, it'll swing a whole game around. One one v two, one one v three. Mm -hmm. I mean, you 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 probably watch it now. It changes the whole game. Just you know, you don't know the intensity or like him getting up like, let's go. I told you these guys are garbage or yeah. some, you know, like that gets the team like, like, let's go. We can't let them down now. Like, wow, like that's yeah. all I had to see. Yeah, it's one of my favorite team teams to watch. Not just from a from a skill level perspective, but definitely like just laughs like not. Remember that remember the coordinated handshakes too? Yeah. Like the, they, the hitch video. Yeah, like you don't that was the, you don't get that sort of chemistry. That's just, insane. You and know? we're watching that back, like that's insane. We're that like, is insane. And and people may dismiss it as like, oh, you guys do that. Like, no, it's not. That that's there was something else there yeah. that, that was like we've were, done we've done that before many a time. Yeah. Like, Mir knew he's like going down low and you know, yeah. freaking Bose was coming up top. It was already, it yeah. Was already, people, people don't get that. They just say, "Well, it's a, it's a, it's a simple high five, but it's not. It's so much more. You guys were it's so in sync, in sync that you, nobody said, "I'm going top," and because nobody was looking at the camera, right? It's it a swag was just, team, yeah. Everyone yeah, was just super naturally swag. doing it. That's yeah. crazy. We watched that. Me and Mir watched that video back the other day, and we were actually mind blown because yeah. we knew. I mean, it's been years since then, and we've had teams, and we still do this, and we know, like, you know. Yeah. But the reason we also were decent is because we had it in place, you know? You you, you supported us then, and yeah. that's another thing it's hard to find. And that goes a long way is having an organization back and their yeah. team up. That's big. I, I agree. And and not one of those that, that come in just with money and then that's that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's anybody, everybody has money. Nobody Long term has, plan. Yeah, everybody has money. I, I mean, anybody can come in and own a team, but it is the sacrifice that goes behind, you know, closed doors that that really push the organization forward. Um, in my opinion, obviously, I'm, I'm very biased the, uh, the way that I ran Optic and, and how I, you know, brought it to be what it is. Um, all right. Let me let's get into a little bit more fun stuff here. All right, so you you join Optic, you you guys separate, mm -hmm. and then eventually we uh, like during advanced at the beginning of Advanced Warfare, I knew that the Nade the Nade was gonna was gonna retire. I I just knew I just had a feeling that he was gonna leave because the like much like today for 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 people like him who have sort of transcended call of duty and and sort of became this like online personality where you can stream anything and people are going to watch uh, much like today right like you see that right now where, where tifu and um like tifu and cloxy who are saying that they're not going to attend one of the tournaments because they're the, the most they can win is 80 but if they're making 80 at home yeah why, they're at home right they're not having to worry travel doing anything yeah so so i i kind of had a feeling that nature was going to be leaving the team and i wanted to fill that spot with karma right so immediately i'm like i'm like i need to sort of like place them somewhere where i can like guarantee the fact that when this happens i can you know put them on. now i will say this if nature would have never retired he would still be on the team you know like uh winning is important to this day you think he's still be on the team yeah, I think so. It, yeah, it, probably. Yeah, we're, we're, it was my, it was my, you know, my, my, Man, my brother. There is scumper it, jumper though. Yeah. Oh no, he he would have to stay too. <laughs> you know, it, it'd be, I, I, I'm glad that it never got to the point to where Seth said we need to replace Nate Shot. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad that that never happened because I would have been put in a position to say, who do I pick between my two? But it was coming to that low key, right? Like kinda. I don't think so. Yeah, I think I think I think uh, that that there was still more more things that we could have done together uh and, and we, you know we, obviously we, he, he didn't leave the team completely we, we we still did great things but anyway i'm glad that it never got to that because you know it's funny looking back too because like 
now when you see teams, it's almost like everyone tries to make like a God squad, you mm -hmm. know? And then it was like you had your personalities with your slayers and your yeah. all-stars. And it's like nowadays, you know, there's teams in the league that there's pe like that people really don't know about. And that's, you know, mm -hmm. those people have an opportunity to now, you know, maybe start doing stuff like putting out some, you know, content or doing something like a, a no brainer would, you would do it if you were in their shoes, like, yeah. and they're just not doing it. And been there, done it. And, you know, I know, I just know that they're going to look back, like I said, and be like, like what, where did it go? Why did I not at least give it a shot? Yeah. And, I told Mir that for years, stream, stream, and now he can't play without a stream. He's like, I don't even know how I used to get on without streaming. Yeah. Because, and it's just funny because that's when he was passionate. Now his passion comes from his people watching him. And yeah. that's kind of how I am. Yeah. Which is good, man. It's not, it's, yeah. it's not a bad thing. And, and, and for me, like I always say, and I'll, I'll keep it short, like I always made sure that everybody had a side hustle going on, whether it was streaming or, mm -hmm. or, or making YouTube videos. Um, and I sort of enforced that rule for everybody. Now now it's secondhand. Like mm -hmm. now it's, if you're a pro, you also have to be doing these things because you, you can't just you do it. think, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, we, you know, I talked about it, what was that? I talked about it in my vlog a couple of days ago. Like Scumpy is doing three jobs right now. He's doing the job of a full-time streamer. He's doing the job of a full-time YouTuber. And then on top of that, he's doing the job of a fucking pro player at teep, the highest teep level. Teep two, look. Yeah, teep, teep two. Teep two. Yeah, teep, teep longevity. I mean, again, it's, it's one of those things where where as a team owner or as teammates, if you're not if you're not pushing each other to do the side hustle, you're gonna be left in a pretty awkward spot when it comes. I mean, obviously you, obviously miracles, obviously people that have that legendary statuses are always gonna have that that sort of opportunity. Yeah, but and this took years of us learning, you know? Like I'm learning this stuff now, you know, ten years of doing this. And some people only been doing six, four or five, who knows? You know, I've been doing a ten plus. Like, you know? So like that's why I would like when I say stuff like that to the younger players, you would think like and it's funny, like Tiny's a good person, right? Mm -hmm. um, a great personality, you know, a good kid. You know, I played with him when I was at, for many people that don't know him, he's just an up and coming am, you know, he's a good personality. He has like 500 subs. People like watching him, you know, yeah. he's a funny kid. And, uh, oh yeah, I, I support, I'll support anybody I see in the am community, anybody, you know, that is constantly grinding, you know, trying to, you know, whatever, how many, you know, I might get off host them, you know? Like, I see stuff like that. I respect, like, you know, people trying to make the most of the opportunity they're given. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I just, there's few people like that in this community, I feel like. And I feel like, uh, I feel like, you know, for all of us, for Call of Duty to go around, right? Yeah, there's plenty. Everybody needs, like, everybody should be doing content, you know? Yeah. It shouldn't be one person you know it shouldn't be you know what i'm saying no i do i mean I, I, th that's always been one of my main points that i drive home every single time is that the, the like youtube is big enough for everybody to be successful if they if they apply themselves to a certain mm -hmm. degree um you know one of the, one of the reasons that i continue to vlog is is not only because i get you know some money out of it but also because i get to catalog uh you know my life in this day and age right if i could go back and watch what my dad was like when i was eight years old or when he was going through uh, his thoughts the way he thought of things like i would like to revisit that so sort of live has this this opportunity to go back and, and look at her dad's sort I was of journey. Say, your kids gonna be watching him yeah non-stop yeah because that's another reason i kind of you know how I am with this YouTube stuff. Yeah. Like I'm like always on the fence with it. I think that might, if I do start, that will be the deal breaker is the, uh, cause my kids will be able to go back and watch one yeah. day, you know, and maybe even, it, you know, look up to me, admire me. Yeah. You never know. Okay. Never, you know, of course. never know. Yeah. So that's definitely something. Yeah. I'm you, think you, about. you sort of have to, and look, it's, it's you, you are adding to history as this goes along. Never before have you been able, and, and, and you look at traditional sports, never before do you get to go and really see, what was happening from a player's perspective as the league formed, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and I think that there's there's an opportunity here to really catalog the history of competitive Call of Duty if Call of Duty one day gets to be a nationally televised, and I say nationally with tongue in cheek because esports is way bigger than just one nation yeah. and globally, right? So a, a globally syndicated sort of like event. And you get to see that being built uh, in, in every single day with every single esport that's going on. Um, on, on the topic of of, of that, um, and then I'm going to ask you some 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 optic questions about the conspiracies. Okay, but we'll do that towards the end. We'll end it with that. Um, <laughs> what is what is um, actually? You know what? No, let, let, let's talk a little bit about you. Um, when was the last time you competed professionally? And and I want to I want to dive deep into that because I, I think 
like you, I think that you still have a place in in Call of Duty esports. Like, I don't think I don't think Call I, of Duty. I would itself give it up. I, I I wouldn't compete if I think I wasn't good enough. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I really, I mean, I, I'm real myself most of the time. I've been at least recently in my life, but I can still compete. I, I competed at the first event. My teammate didn't show up. Yeah. So, t- so, so well, that's that's what I want to ask you. We're playing what, top eight in two Ks. I mean, that was pretty good. That, that is good. That that's, is good. That's pro level, obviously. That's pro level at the beginning of the game, yeah. What happened? What happened? What, why? What happened to in, in your career that that has led you to you know being in this position where you're sort of in limbo, still can compete, but don't have the opportunity? Like what happened? How? When did it start? Do you think? Um, Pops three. It started and uh, it it started with jetpacks. Everyone got this you know persona that I'm not good at jetpacks, mm-hmm. which I don't know where it comes from. There's still stuff that goes around the community that is just mind blowing, you know? That's people are whatever. That I wasn't good at jetpacks, you know? I literally didn't even get to play with the players I played with my whole career when I was doing well. I'm playing with AMs now. Mm-hmm. So I'm really not given the same opportunity I was to begin with. I'm yeah. playing with players that have been not even placed in top 16 in their careers. Like, how can I lie to myself and tell myself, hey, I'm going to go to the event with these guys mm-hmm. who've never done anything, you know, and somehow magically I'm going to do something? Yeah. Like, you know, that's not, that's kind of the odds I've been weighing out. Cause like you said, I can stream, I can focus on more of just being, you know, uh, no, you belong on the stage, man. Yeah. I want to compete, but, but if I'm not happy at the same time, yeah. then I'm just not even being a good person, a good streamer. Not even some, like somebody who tunes into my stream, for example, if they, if they see me a couple of years ago, you know, not happy, not, not to where I want it to be in life maybe in my career as a person, whatever, they're not going to turn back into my stream again. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to, they're going to have a whole different outlook on me. And I just, you know, I stopped. You about that? I'm not about that no more, yeah. What was the last team that, that you competed in at a professional level? And when was it? At the beginning, what was it? Like last year, right? You, you competed last year for World War II? No, I got banned last year. Tell me about that. You got, you got caught playing. We've been going for days about my career, man. <laughs> Um, well, it's an interesting one, though, and, 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 it's, and it's such a staple in Call of Duty history that it has to be told. It, because I'm, I was the example. That's why it has to be told. And, you know, it was a good time and a good place, you know. Uh, World at War two. the same situation I've been in, you know, playing with amateur players, not really getting a shot at the beginning of the year. That's when the system didn't work as good as it did now. Mm-hmm. Everybody in the league now earned their spot. That is the best competition in the world is in the league. Yeah. It wasn't like that last year, the mm-hmm. year before. Some players, you know, or some nations were just given spots. All those players at that league now deserve to be at that league. Yeah. And that's what makes that's what makes me interested in it. Yeah. That's why, you know, I got back into multiplayer. It was the league. It was competitive. You seen these amps coming out of nowhere, you know, doing things. And that's what it's all about. And and uh what were we talking about again? <laughs> so uh, uh, we wanted to talk about why you got banned, but I wanted to. Oh. I wanted to go. You, you say that World War Two, like you weren't getting the same chances. So what came before World War Two? Infinity Ward, Infinite Warfare. Did that's, you compete at Infinite Warfare? Yeah, the Phil. Uh, that's when Phil passed the beginning of the game, mm-hmm. My, and so that's when I went off. You know, that's when you know I really started. That's when I went. I guess you could say started going back down the mountain or going mm-hmm. deep, whatever you yeah. want to say, and. That's when I started realizing I needed to get my life together was then because my best friend at the time just died, Phil. Yeah. You know, yeah. I would always, yeah. I would stream every day with Phil. We were yeah, a yeah. duo stream. Oh, yeah. Rest in peace, Fizzerp. We would entertain each other. One day, if you know, I didn't have the energy, he had it. And yeah. he was just doing some off-the-wall stuff. Like, he was just an entertainer. He was there to literally grow his fan base, nothing else. Yeah. And that he also wanted to win, but it was all about, it was all about the people. Yeah. And that's where like when I give like outlooks on stuff nowadays, it's all about the people. It's about grown card. I want you to be able to get on multiplayer and get kills, you know, mm-hmm. or, or you be able to get on and, and use some type of strategy, you know, not just, hey, like, hey, you need to hit your slide button and camera like, you know, type of thing. Like just because you're 30 or whatever, how old doesn't mean you cannot be a 17 or 16 year old. Like that's just that's the point where I wish I could, you know, have cod. Yeah. But uh <clears throat> Just more gun skill based now. So in Infinity Ward, you you played you played on a professional team, right? And that's then, right around, yeah, that's when I started going downhill. I played with Mox Sweets. We didn't do too good at Vegas. I mm-hmm. played like ass. My head was all over, all over the place that yeah. whole year. I I was, I 
that year in World War II, the state of mind I was in, I was not the same player. I was not a champion. If I told myself that, um, that I deserved better or that I was a winner, I was not. I, I, I was at a point in life where I felt like you know, like the, the environment I was around at my mom's and my, like my dad's, for example, mm -hmm. like they made me feel like a winner, you know? Yeah. They, you know, they actually, and it's weird going to like a different place yeah. and not having that same support system. Yeah. It made me realize that I am to where I am today because of yeah. my parents. Yeah. They made who I am today. Yeah. And without that support or at, without that system, yeah, I wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's the truest shit, man, ever. You know, without a support system, no matter what it is, it doesn't always have to be family. You know, mm -hmm. anybody can be your support system if, if they have a, a way of lifting you up when you need to be lifted. Um, so you, so Infinity Ward, obviously, that's when, when sort of like a little killer downfall started to happen. In World War II, uh, World War II was when you first became a father, right? Or was it in Nah, that was I. Yeah. Oh, okay. So right around when Phil passed, I had Paisley. So yeah. my career, I placed like I, I wasn't doing well in COD. Mm -hmm. I was still trying to cope with just becoming a parent. Yeah. Right. And at the time, it was overwhelming. Now I look back and I was like, you know, why was I? You know, why was I so stressed? Why was I bugging? Because there's no point of stressing or bugging, right? It's not going to get you anywhere, except maybe the, the baby will feel the tension, or yeah. you could feel like whatever. They can get deep into it, but there's no point. Like I know. I know what I have to do now, and it, but then I didn't, and it was scary. It was overwhelming. Phil asked, I'm a conspiracist. I started getting into all these weird thoughts and mm -hmm. wasn't focused, and my career wasn't going well. So those three things, and my relationship at the time was kind of so like, I, I just had too much on my plate. Yeah. I was not a good, I was not a, I was not a champion. Yeah. I was not, I didn't have the right environment, but I still did deserve better, I felt like, but yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't the, cha I wasn't the a champion. When, when when the news came out that you got caught account recovering or whatever and, and you know subsequently got banned i in my head my, my my mind immediately went to this dude was just trying to make money to support his kid it, it, by any means fucking necessary you know I, what i'm saying your picture you're right i want i'll tell you the story why i got banned uh, teams that are in the league now were actually the players that got me banned we're playing in a Canadian qualifier. Mm -hmm. I wanted to play the match against Top Ams at the time. Mm -hmm. It was a BZ. Uh, the kids in some of the kids in the league now, you yeah. know, I wanted to play against competition, and then it was hard to play against. Like it was all about the pro points, you know. Yeah. Nobody played like hard, like pickup scrims or went hard. Everyone just got on, got their points, and got off because you could play on limited amount of points a day, and it was a system. So we were in the qualifier match, and I remember seeing Valkyrie S and D. I wanted to play this series because I wanted to, you know, practice. Yeah. I wanted to perfect my game. I'm a perfectionist. I wanted to yeah. critique some stuff or learn some new stuff. Yeah. And uh, I remember I went ten and zero in Valkyrie S and D. Keep in mind, I'm playing with like my friends from a Discord, and we're yeah. beating top AMs, and they're who are like, now pro players. Yeah. And they're like super salty about it because I'm, uh, I forget, I was running the waffle on Valkyrie S and D. <laughs> Apparently it's uh, not allowed, uh -huh. but I looked at the rules, it was allowed. And I was like 13 and 0 on the map, I remember. And that's when I knew, I'm like, I'm getting banned, dude. I'm like, these guys, are, I was like, I should be showing people because everyone knows I'm a different type of player. Yeah. I was using, uh, I remember watching the stream back before I got banned. They were like, yeah, it's definitely killer. He's using that reticle because they like knew a reticle I used. Yeah. And, uh, I don't play. I never played the same as anybody else. So like, I have a unique style about my game. Mm -hmm. So it was an obvious giveaway. And would I ever do it again? No, yeah. <laughs> not even worth the risk. Was it something so stupid? Yeah. Okay. Did it end up costing me? Yeah, because I was gonna go to champs with a uh, nameless and Dame. They're just gonna go. You know, hey, let's play a killer. Let's just show up. You know, we got mm -hmm. points. Why not? And uh, that would have been my opportunity. To maybe get back in the circle. But yeah, but you couldn't. You got banned. I got banned. Damn, that's crazy. I, I, my mind immediately went that's like from a parent standpoint. I needed that though. Then I need, I needed to get my life together. It actually, I, I didn't regret it at the time. It was actually something that was the preparation I needed for this year. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I still could have did good this year. Yeah. If the, my given fifth, the opportunity, if my fifth showed up. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, it's. Are you guys going to compete? Are you competing at DFW? I don't think so. Uh, I know. I brought up the idea to Bose, like just showing up. You know, mm -hmm. Mir. Maybe we'll grab like some other content, maybe Tiny, you know, he doesn't mm -hmm. have a team, you know, yeah. some good personalities. Yeah. 
some good guys to play with, some skilled players. I think it, uh, giving it a shot is, is not a is not a bad idea, man. Especially like I I, I do believe that there's still a place for you to play. I, there's still a role for you to play in in, in Call of Duty, man. So uh, you know, w- one of my favorite personalities of all time. Um, what is what do you see that's that's wrong with Call of Duty right now? Obviously, if we're seeing it seeing it from a being who you are, a professional, a champion, uh, somebody who studies the game, not just because it's your job, but because you love the game. What do you see that's wrong with Call of Duty right now? Um, if there's anything, I think uh, just the players having too much power right now, and just like the rule set and stuff like that. They don't like they don't realize like we have to make the game playable for everybody. You, you know, maybe you're your older brother your older cousin or your older uncle or yeah, or maybe your a broader your, audience you got it there you go you got to be able to reach out to the old heads or reach out to the young fellas or you need to you know meet somewhere in the middle and i feel like right now we're kind of learning towards the get cracked the young kids are just running around hitting as many buttons as they can yeah and <laughs> I'm like more towards the, you know, I'm getting older. I'm going towards the back end. So. Yeah. So t- tell me how you felt about the the five v five because you know when you say that we we have to play a game that's playable by everyone. I think that they did a good uh, personally. I think that they did a good job in in sort of meeting in the middle, right? Four uh, professionals were playing four v four. Pubs were playing. Uh, was it six v six? Right. So they said, all right, let's let's give let's meet in the middle at five. So people can play five five five. What what did you what do you think about that? I don't think it was that big of a deal. I think some of the maps we chose this year though, like frequency, is probably one of like the smallest maps ever in a competitive rotation. And it, it's it's in my opinion, I think it's like one of the worst maps I've ever played. Mm-hmm. And it, there's I don't think there's a co- one competitive thing about the map. I can break it down to you. There's three hard point spawns. There's one here, one here, one there. That's not competitive. Bob's mm-hmm. two map like contraband this year. Four spawns on a hill was like Bob's two. Now you need to find a way to block both spawns from mm-hmm. one cutoff or one. Now you got to get creative mm-hmm. with your spots and stuff. And I just feel like we're kind of like leaning away from the creativity because of examples like that. And it's simple, something as simple as a frequency S and D you can get from A to B bomb site in six seconds. What's search about rotating bombs, baiting? You know, there's there's nothing there. Yeah. At that point, you're just playing team deathmatch, and I feel like we choose the wrong maps as a community. There's this one map in the game that is beautiful. I forget what it's called. You probably never even seen or heard of. Well, it, no, it's not. Uh, some it's beautiful map in this game. The one with the church tower, the little church, and then it has like the rock and then the bridge. I don't know. You probably will. I only play blackout, bro. Whatever. But we didn't give the map a try. It was yeah. a beautiful map, and as a community, we're so close minded. And so simple minded yeah. that it's almost like it's not good. It's not good for uh, growth. It almost mm-hmm. makes me feel like I'm superior. But in reality, a lot of things these players are doing are just biased. They're based upon what they're good at. And that's what I have a problem with in Call of Duty right now. Yeah. I, Phil taught me that. He taught me that uh, it's not about us, it's about them. Yeah. You know, we. it's about the fans, the it's about what the people want to watch. Yeah. I mean, if you if you look at the moment where we were losing the hard point on Seaside, and it happened twice during that tournament, you still watch, right? You still watch everything? Yeah, I have been. Yeah. Um, the leagues would really... I haven't watched Scott all the way up, or word of word, I didn't watch it all. I watched... Uh, I might have watched... I watch you guys. Yeah. Yeah, I'll watch you guys, because I love... I love the drama behind it. If you guys don't, when you mm-hmm. know how that is, yeah, and it's like, all right, ooh, ooh, you know, <laughs> so you know last how year, it is. I love last, last year was super entertaining to you then, yeah, because we lost every not people really come the- my chat out, tell them exactly why what's wrong, and I would just give my opinion, and, yeah, you know, I'm like, hopefully, God, let's go back and watch it, but yeah, yeah, I always give my honest opinions, and you should, bro, but people don't like that. I'll never get a chance to play with that player again because I told him how I really, but that's just like how, yeah, that's the. It's the chain of how yeah. it really works. Would you ever coach? You're obviously knowledgeable yeah. about everything that is called. You, you would? I, f- I feel like I'd be a really good coach. And I've been, uh, I was pressing LG for a while to, to let me uh, coach because, I, you know, I've been beating at this for, I want to contribute to a championship team. Whether yeah. it's competing, uh, coaching, I want to, you know, yeah. I, I can contribute. I, I strongly believe I could, can contribute, yeah. you know? 
And I don't know. It's like people, you know, they don't really want to, they don't really want to take the chance. Yeah. And it's, they don't understand it. They don't really understand me or anything really. I, I think, I think, I think the opportunity will happen for you this year. I'm a, I'm a big, big fan of, uh, of uh, second opportunities, especially with people who have, you know, prove, I mean, hey, who hasn't done dumb shit in their lives? You know what I'm saying? Like get the fuck Seriously. off your high horse, you know? Um, that ass. You know, it's really it's easy for me to say since we have TP as a coach, and you know, mm-hmm. I, I'm not, I'm, I don't, you know, I'm not in a position where I can be like, I don't have a coach, you know, I, I, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, in 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 uh in in the spirit of of uh, the conspiracies that you were talking about, give me some of your best conspiracies, that, and and be honest, right? Like literally, be like that one time that the bracket changed automatically or something, because I don't, you know, what I'm saying like, I, what what are some of the optic conspiracies oh, that you've always remember uh, Emily K picking the maps back in the day. Okay, go on. Do you remember that? No, no, start, start, no, tell me. Remember uh, Chicago? And it's funny because I have a lot of, I actually talk to my fans now. Yeah. And, right, and they're a conspiracist too. And that's why they still watch me, still yeah, love me. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. feed into my stuff yeah. because they, it's like they don't want to believe it. Or it's like, it's like they want, it's like they want to believe it, yeah. but it's so far fetched. But at the same time, it makes sense. Yeah, and it's like it's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. Yeah. There you go. And um, even like uh, I was watching something like, have the humans really been in the moon? Like I, I watch all that conspiracy stuff. I same. love it. You watch uh, Shane Dawson's conspiracies? No, what's that? Shane Dawson is a is a famous YouTuber. He's probably the best YouTuber out right now. Like in my, in my opinion, like if he puts something out, I'm watching it. The most recent one sort of went vi- viral because he he. And there's there's pictures, right? The Chuck E. Cheese's. Uh, oh, oh, I did see that with the pizza. Yeah, putting it re back in. Yeah, and he was eating it out front, like, oh, this pizza's pretty good. It was yeah, something. I might have seen a Twitter vine or something. Bro, you gotta go, go watch and uh, just look up Shane Dawson and watch the right. the conspiracy because it's crazy. There's like 20 million views on the video. I don't know. I'm fucking making shit up, but it's like uh, what what happens is in the or in the conspiracy theory, and I'm not saying this. Uh, I'm just repeating what I saw. He his. He, he thinks that a lot of people think that Chuck E. Cheese's will pick up uneaten pizzas and then go in the back and then puzzle them together with other pizzas so they don't have to remake a brand new pizza. Therefore, obviously, if you're saving money on making a new pizza, then you know what I'm saying? So let's say uh, you go with your family. But they would have to make the pizza anyway, though, right? <laughs> so, so he, they, yeah, but no. Let's say I'm there. And I have a pepperoni pizza. You order pepperoni pizza with your family, and Maddie behind the camera orders a pepperoni pizza. We each don't eat a third of the pizza. So they'll bring. Which happens in, a lot, probably. They'll bring it in the back, and then they'll put those those. Uh, they'll just they'll make a pizza out in? of it. And what are they doing? Eating the eating the fresh pizza then? No, or they're, they're just constantly. They're just grabbing. It? They're just grabbing whatever you left over. Whatever he left over, and, and then they make no, no, a circle. No, I know, it. but where's the where, where's the benefit in that? Because you're still gonna have to cook a whole pie, right? No. Afterwards, no, because you're just grabbing it and you put a little cheese on top of it, and then you just put it through the through the oven. Cheese melts together, and then you just bring out a, oh, a pizza. Oh, I see what you're saying. Ew, that's disgusting. Yeah. So anyway, that, that's it's it's a conspiracy. Thing. Anyway, so <laughs> back to the optic <laughs> conspiracy stuff. That's disgusting. I should not think about Which, it. Just, just uh, your Emily Kate. Yeah, sure. Um. So back in uh, UMG, whatever, that's when Moho still competed. Remember Moho? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moho. <laughs> He's like, man. Moho, Moho. And uh, so Optic won the event. Remember the uh, auto FAL? Remember Big Timer yeah, shared yeah, it with yeah. that? He, he didn't even know that it was. He yeah. just put it out and was like, whoa, it's yeah, so stupid. Yeah. And uh, that's another thing. The meta is, there was metas back to where we were before with yeah. Call of Duty. Like now, there's yeah. a new meta that dropped. Nobody liked it. Yeah. Then it was like, get used to the meta, get ahead. There's meta players like me who will yeah. find new guns and excel. Yeah. We need to just play what the developers give us at this point. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, we just literally need to let them do their job and we need to do our job. And I cannot blame, I used to blame them and that was just pure out of stupidity. But it all starts with the community. Mm-hmm. The community, well, it starts with the developer support, obviously. But we've been getting that. And then it goes to the community, right? They're trying. They drop, uh, they made us play a bar wire in what's it called in the beginning of the game? Yeah. They literally did like a immediate, you know, update to where bar wire doesn't block you and, and, and hurt you at all. It just slows you down as you walk through. Something so irrelevant, you know, something that doesn't need to be GA'd or whatever. Yeah. And 
instead of just leaving it in the game and like acting like it's not a big deal like claymore it's like come on growing up or growing up us playing we knew claymore's wasn't in the game we yeah. didn't even talk about that that was yeah. the obvious you yeah. know and i'm gonna give the solution to all this fix in a sec but uh now people are just like uh taking advantage of it and i ain't gonna say names but it's the same people who's been trying to manipulate for 10 years it's the same people that still on top of call of duty the mm -hmm. the masterminds behind it people yeah. don't know that there's people there's aches is the best at what he does and it's crazy because he is such a great leader he's a good like that's why you said you have respect there's a method to his madness yeah he's a method to his genius genius yeah he's he's a leader he's an alpha he knows how to he knows how to manipulate like he always would over the years come to me and like killer no lmgs like <clears throat> i'm like nice try buddy you know <laughs> it's literally it's been going on for five ten years <laughs> He'd be like, killing no shotguns this series? He'd be like, no, I'm using it. You know I'm better than you with a shotgun. Yeah. Why would I agree to no shotguns? Yeah. What? He he was he was in your in your in your streams a lot too. Yeah. Right? He was watching. He even got rule sets changed because of me, like <laughs> <laughs> And don't get me wrong, I respect the the heck out of the guy. And I know like he's a great player, but he's just, you know, he's just guiding the sheep at this point, man. Yeah. So back to the conspiracies about Opti, because I do want to hear them, because some of them are like mad funny to me. They go on and on, yeah. Conspiracies in general. Yeah. Um, do you think? Do you think that there that there was uh, situations where where you felt as though Opti got favorited in a tournament environment? You know how it is going to event. You, when you got the crowd behind you and stuff like that. First of all, that right there alone. I guess like in my eyes, like you could like, it's already kind of like a, a favorite thing, like walking into their atmosphere, no matter where you go, optic is, you know, they're, they're coming out and they're supporting yeah. their, their, their team. We, we, we have home court advantage everywhere, everywhere we go. you go. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that, that means, that means the difference. Definitely. I thrive off environments like that, but I love that. And yeah. that's the type of person I am. But a lot of these guys are gamers, you know, it's different. They're still learning and doing things. It's not the same. Like it's easy to it's easy to get in these players' heads. And like Clayster said it the other day in an interview after his match, he's like, oh, "I just got hype." He's like, "There's no crowd." He's like, "But I, I just know there's some other players on their team, you know, that don't really do too fond of that kind of throwing somebody on their bus." Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's kind of how it is. Like you could really, uh, you guys have the home court advantage everywhere you go. Like yeah, you you, said. That affects obviously that that, that affects. I've yeah. seen it affect my teams. They get real down. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, well, on, on, on that note, do you think that um, if the rumors are true, which I hope they're not, and Call of Duty franchising becomes a, a regional thing, do you think that's, what do you think about that? What do you think of, of that whole theory of it? I personally would hate to have to call my team the Dallas Optic or the Chicago Optic or I just, it's just not my style. Yeah. Esports is a global phenomenon, man. When you start encapsulating it into this little thing and 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 force people to rethink the way they think of esports, it's just you're 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 doing what what you were talking about earlier. You're separating the community essentially, forcing the community to you know what I'm saying. It's just not personally. What what do you think about it? I can see where you're coming coming from with it because like you one we're here from the start two you've been non-stop working at this till this very day for what since bob's one since whenever and you feel like you know you feel like you shouldn't well i don't know how you exactly feel but from my eyes it looks like you know like hey i built optic game i don't want to be dallas optic or whatever now or whatever the, the planet earth optic you're optic and that's what you are and because you built that and you deserve that because you worked hard to build it up to what it is so i mean i could see where you're like you know i don't really you know, I'm good. You know, I, you know, people. Where do they come from, though? If you if you see it from my perspective, how's their? How can you can you see it from their perspective as to why they they, they want to do that or why it would work? And then I want to know what you think about it. They tried the international thing, where you know, building the international fan base, and you know, it kind of worked. It kind of didn't. You know, it just needs to. Uh, I think European teams are really improving, which is really helping. Like they're actually have credibility now. Rather than before, you know how it was. It was mm -hmm. like we got to act like they have credibility, and they really don't. You know, <laughs> it's like. Uh, but now they're actually they're actually they're good. Some, some of them are good, and uh, I think it'd be awesome. And a lot of people have been sitting here. You know, they've been 
beaten at this for years, you know, they've been sitting here, you know, they've sacrificed so much, whether it's with the family dinners, you know, to scrim. Yeah. You know how many dinners I've missed with my parents to scrim at six or, you know, how many birthdays I've missed or, or whatever the case, like so much. And I have something to show for it, I guess. Right. Not everybody has the same. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, that would really be awesome because there's a lot of people that have had nothing and yeah. they've been doing this and I don't know what they're holding on to or why they love it, but yeah, and it's i think franchising would uh it would really be an opportunity yeah. for a lot of people i think it'd be awesome you would you do you yeah. support it um i would support it yeah one of the you know going we'll end it on this one of my my favorite conspiracies is that <laughs> you know when you were talking about sacrificing dinners and, sh- and like that i always think at how many uh easters i sacrificed because mlg events were always like that and one or, of my or Thanksgiving, yeah. One of my conspiracies, yeah. One studios. of my one of my conspiracies is that they is. I mean, it's not a conspiracy at this point, right? But they <laughs> used to in the in the past. They used to like always book events where it was the cheapest, and it just happened to be that's just business. Yeah, where it was. Uh, look at one point i think they tried to do it on fucking christmas and everybody's like yo you need to chill out yeah. like i understand thanksgiving all right not a lot of people celebrate it easter not a lot of people celebrate it but you know we we halloween we, too i'm sure we've had events on halloween we sacri- uh, we sacrifice a lot for competitive yeah and uh but like you said uh vegas was perfect example cheap hotel yeah. cheap flights you know yeah that allows everybody to be able to gather and come to the first mm-hmm. event that was awesome you know and uh i don't know how that turnout was whatever the case may be uh it just turned out amazing we it won. turned out amazing and <laughs> we won <laughs> it was awesome <laughs> it was great you see the trophies up front yeah yeah so let, let me ask you man uh, and, and we'll end on this what's <laughs> what's uh what's the future hold for killer what's the deal what, what is your plan in your best case scenario what happens in 2019 um good question uh optic gaming's head coach nah so i'm playing with <laughs> but uh just becoming a better better father better person yeah honestly uh i would love to uh obviously get back to where i want to be actually make sure you know i'm not getting overwhelmed with life and you know i just want to stay happy yeah you know and become a better father at the same time you know i still need to pursue a career which i'm doing yeah. but mainly becoming a better father yeah awesome man well listen thank you for stopping by i know we went super super hard and it's like an hour and a half almost bro it flew by i hope that this is the last time that you come I'm on i'm a talker i'm sorry yeah no hey listen i i, I appreciate you cut it. me off a few times no too. Like, i know oh, i didn't know. it's just me interrupting i'm i'm, I'm the worst at that i, I give <laughs> i give people warnings when i say like when i meet up say hey sorry I'm, I'm an interrupter i was forgetting where i was even going sometimes but i'm like what were we talking about again yeah, i don't want to ask him what we're me, talking bro. my brain's about. just like all over the fucking place that it happens but anyway thanks bro i appreciate thank you man it was it was really cool uh again like i said i hope this this isn't the last time again another shout out to our sponsors uh squarespace and upstart thank you so much for sponsoring and if you would like to support the stream or the podcast please remember to rate it a five star on every audio uh, possibility which is uh itunes uh, soundcloud spotify stitcher and google podcast and again leave a like before you leave we'll see you guys on the next time